Hi, I'm Peter Haddock and I'm standing next to an autonomous vehicle that's powered by the Moog system. And I've got Stephen here. Stephen, you're one of these autonomous geeks, we like to call you, that takes all of the technology and makes it happen. That's what right. have we got on this vehicle? We've got a lot of sensors on the vehicle. So we've got cameras around all four corners. Yep. You see them there. Uh, we've got a LiDAR unit in the back. Uh, we've got wireless antenna uh, that's to communicate back to our base station, which is hiding over there. Yeah. Bumper for safety, yeah, so folks. Bumper yep, for safety, yep. yep. We've got, this is our spinning LiDAR that gives us the point cloud that you can see in the back. Okay. So spinning LiDAR is yes. basically a sensor that's lo literally giving us really, really millions of dots yes. that it's, it's looking at to exactly. give you a point and cloud. getting yeah. very good distance on each one of them. And you can see those points are being displayed on that screen behind us. Right, so the importance of a LiDAR, folks, is because we want to see what we're doing. So an autonomous vehicle has to follow a map. Now, the other thing you've got is a base station over, over there, yes. folks, and that's really important because that gives us the corrections for the machine on the site, doesn't it? That's correct. That's for our GPS, which is also another antenna that we've got actually in the front, front and back. Right, fantastic. So let's walk around the machine a little bit more. So one of the things about autonomous vehicles um, that I like is they can do all the monotonous tasks That's correct. that are out there. And we can even get these autonomous vehicles working unsociable hours. Yeah, uh, that's uh, right. You know, in, Nighttime. In also, for me, what's really important, in, in dangerous applications that we don't want to people. put people in, in exactly. harm's way. And so again, you know, we see all the control unit elements there. That's correct. What is that doing? What is that linking? To. So we're actually talking to the vehicle to be able to drive it. So okay. that's all that's all that's happening. And we're monitoring all the vehicle systems using all of that interface. Okay, so the antenna there is giving us all of that feedback into base wherever that is. That's right. So we're actually doing some processing on board and then we're sending all that data back to our online system which lets us map and, and get an idea of what's actually happening. And we're going to talk to one of your colleagues about that later yes. on. So we've got all of this mapped, we've got all of the, the systems and the connectivity there and we've got the ability to put this hat as you're saying, and if you can see sure. that whole section there, it looks a bit like a hat to me, folks, onto this machine, but also onto a lot of other different machines That's because correct. it's scalable, isn't it? That's correct, yes. The system is set up so that we can take any vehicle that we can talk to and actually just put this machine or another one similar on top of it and actually run that. And then you go straight into the canvas on this so that you're, you're completely controlling the vehicle. Everything that's happening on this vehicle, yep. So, it's an autonomous package, folks. This, this is an important bit that, that links with your now solution. What's the solution called again? Uh, the Rock. The Rock the Interface, yeah. yes. The Rock Interface. So. so, fundamentally, folks, this is allowing us to take any machine. This is actually an older diesel machine. That's correct. And non electric. So non electric, right. and we've put this system on it. So right. that gives a machine where you might be putting it in dangerous or, or, or dis different, difficult applications. You don't want to put a new machine into Correct. that application, right. perhaps, and therefore you can make it autonomous. And of course, folks, the autonomy and the solutions with this also works with the remote control as well. That's right. Yeah. Well, look, it's fascinating to see you can put a hat on an old diesel and make it autonomous. And most companies want to do that. If they've got a whole fleet of already diesel machines, they don't want to buy new ones. No, they exactly. They just want to use this. Well, it's fantastic. Thanks very much. Yes. Cheers. Thank you. So now we've come into Autonomy HQ with Tom, who's the autonomous specialist here. Tom, really seeing some splendid work done out there and on the screens here. And we talked to your colleague earlier about all of the autonomous systems that are on there. But what does all the technology bit problem solve? Well, look, there's uh, a lot of jobs that are needed to, uh, very labor intensive for outdoor construction projects. Yep. So we're focusing right now in utility grade solar construction projects. Uh, they're very dull, very dangerous jobs, they're very dirty, they're out in the middle of nowhere, and they need a lot of people. Right. So what we're trying to do is reduce the amount of people that are needed for each of these projects so that there can be more of these projects. So we're right. supposed to be increasing many, many gigawatts per year for solar installations. So in order to do that, we need to be able to do these projects. I mean, we're not really trying to take people out, we're trying to really make them more productive, right? So we can build more projects per year, install, install more solar panels per year. And what's really interesting about that solar farm you're talking about is that you can map that really straightforward way of mapping that and delivering all the products right. in. And that's what the whole systems are here are doing. They're showing a map and we're designing for machines to actually do the job. So this is a robot type approach. Give it a task, here it is, there's where you need to go, 
and that's how it works, I guess. That's right. That's right. We we say autonomous vehicles a lot, right? But yeah. these vehicles are not really autonomous. We're telling them exactly what job to do, yep. and then they're supposed to do that. They're supposed to follow what we're telling to do. So with the with these solar farms, especially, it's very repetitive, right? There could be thousands of acres, and it's all the same cookie cutter yeah, sections yeah. of project. Yeah. So we can load in the CAD drawing for a, a project, a project site, and we're able to process that, and that gives us all the lanes of operation and driving that, we, that the vehicles can follow. So we can be sure that that vehicle is not going to be able to deviate and go to places where it's not supposed to go, and therefore we make sure, we ensure that there's no damage to any of the property or any of the infrastructure that we're trying to install. And of course, with all the camera systems and everything like that, we're also avoiding people. That's and therefore, right. we're making the, the job site a safer place to be. We're actually helping people do their job and therefore taking the monotony away. But the autonomous journey folks can also begin and start here with the Moo Construction team, but also it can end here with the Moo Construction team. Because folks, it's time to switch off the autonomous vehicle. And that's why you will always have somebody on site uh, with one of these devices to actually make sure they can turn off when they need it to. That's right, but that will never happen.